Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends. Welcome back to our slash entitled people, where you'll hear stories about people who believe the world revolves around them and that rules do not apply to them. Much like this person right here. OP posts a picture of a person that decided to block both handicap spaces and the ramp instead of parking in an actual space. Now, if you don't know and are thinking, that's not too bad, she's not even in the handicap spots. Well, this is what happens when you park like this. You block wheelchair access. One more before the stories, all right. So this guy goes on Facebook after his wife buys a birthday cake and he says, my wife bought me a Range Rover cake for my birthday. And look at this, I'm mad as hell. This looks like a smart car, a stuffed pillow, and even that dumb truck from the movie Cars. Now her and her friends are mad because I cursed all of them out. $20 or best offer. Inbox now or I'm about to throw this down the street. Serious offers only. No lowballers. Guys, now this is just sad. Talk about being ungrateful to the max. Not liking the cake is one thing, but to put it on social media and saying it's a dumb cake that your wife bought and then try to sell it? My guy, come on. His wife is way, way too good for him. My friends, if you think those two were entitled, the stories today will have you rolling. So the first story is nice and short, and it's how a teenager absolutely destroys a Karen on a train. The second story, an entitled woman learns a very valuable lesson, and we'll finish up with a mother who needs to learn some privacy. Guys, I do hope you enjoy the stories today, and hit that subscribe button for future stories. And oh, check out what this lovely subscriber sent me. It's a picture of my sheep high-fiving a Karen, like, like we're best friends or something, I don't know. I freaking love it. So, I saw this today, and I can't stop laughing. I was traveling in my city metro. It wasn't that much crowded at the time, but the seats were all occupied. Still, you could freely stand without being bumped by a stranger. There was this kid sitting in the reserve seats, which were only for people with handicaps, pregnant women, and old people. Definitely not for moms of two-year-olds. He was probably 14 or 15 years old, I don't know, and he's the hero of the story here. At one stop, our Karen comes on. She has this cute little child who was trying to keep up with mom's pace. Karen instantly sees our hero sitting at the reserve seat and just stares at him. I guess this was her way of making people automatically give away their seats or something. The kid did not move though, and this probably irked her a lot I guess, cause she moved towards the kid with heavy steps. She comes near him, stops again, and does the stare. This kid does not budge. She then starts screaming at him about how he's so rude for being a bratty teenager and not giving up his seat for herself and a few older people around him who are also standing. If she didn't have the whole compartment's attention earlier, she had it now. She continues berating the kid for sitting in a reserved seat and not giving it for someone more deserving, like a mother like herself with a young kid. She also says his parents should have taught him better. She keeps shouting and screaming and tries to get others' opinion on it, and for a while, the people were on her side. Then, the kid out of nowhere rolls his right side of his jeans up and detaches his artificial leg. And without saying a word, he holds it in front of Karen's face. The look in her face was priceless. It looked like she was mortified and embarrassed at the same time, and she just backed away silently. She also got off at the next stop, and I don't think that was her stop. Oh my goodness, guys. What a gem of a story this was, my friends. That is the ultimate mic drop moment after holding up his leg and not even saying a word. Well done, sir. Well done. So, this happened earlier today, and was too perfect to not share with you guys. I work in construction as the foreman for a new house build. The location is kind of strange. The house is 250 feet up a hill via footpath only. All of our materials have to come up this footpath by hand, and it's a pain in the ass to manually carry, quite literally, an entire house up this hill. One of our saving graces is having the two parking spots on the street at the bottom of the hill, marked with an official no parking sign. Unfortunately, there's an elementary school about half a block away, and the parents seem to regularly think it's okay to park in our spots. Now, I consider myself a reasonable person, so if someone parked in the spots and we don't have a delivery, or don't need to park a truck, I'll let it go. If we need the spots and there's someone parked there, however, I will ask them to move nicely, and most of the time they do, immediately. Until today. So, I get a phone call from the lumber delivery truck that's en route to our location. He says he'll be there in about two or three minutes. I let him know that I'll meet him at the streets and make sure he has space to park. He's carrying all the material to frame the roof of the house, which is a lot of really big lumber and will easily take an hour to bring up the hill. 
I didn't want him parked in the middle of the street with hazards on for an hour when we have a perfectly good parking spot for him. As I begin my trip up the hill, I notice that there's a school parent, a Karen, sitting in her car idling. So, assuming she's just waiting to pick up her child, I walk up to the car and politely let her know that she's parked in a no parking zone and we really need her to clear it to park a delivery truck. She scoffs at me and rudely states back, I'll just be a few minutes and your truck isn't even here. Take a chill pill, dude. Before I can respond, a giant lumber truck comes around the corner and I wave to him and then gesture towards him to the woman in her car who has now put her window back up to ignore me. I put on my best customer service smile and wave at her through the window. She puts it down halfway and angrily shouts, What? So by now the truck has pulled up alongside her car and I politely ask her again with a stronger tone of voice to move her vehicle, reminding her that she's illegally parked in a towaway zone. Then she gives me this wonderful idea. She says, Just give me a few more minutes. My daughter will be out of school soon. Can't you guys just unload around me? Jesus, it's not that hard. So I give her another smile and walk away, a brilliant plan forming in my head. I instruct the driver to park as close to her as possible. He smiles because he immediately gets what I'm trying to do and proceeds to expertly block this lady and her car into a little two parking spot jail. We unstrap the lumber and my guys begin bringing the material up the hill. Meanwhile, I call the police parking enforcement to let them know the situation. At this point in time, I wasn't trying to get her in trouble. I just wanted a record of why we were blocking the part of the street, so we don't get in trouble with the city. The very friendly officer lets me know that she can be there in about 30 minutes and deal with the situation for me, which was wonderful. As we continue to unload the lumber, the child of the parent shows up. And wouldn't you know, the mom is just now realizing that the lumber truck is parked so close that she can't get out of her driver door to meet her kid. She awkwardly clamors across the inside of her car and stumbles out the passenger door, shooting glaring looks at me and the truck driver in the process. She loads her kid into the back and then begins to realize that she has no way of leaving. She comes storming up to myself and the driver and states, I'm in a big hurry. You need to move your damn truck right now so I can go. Before I can respond, the driver gets a grin on his face and says, Ma'am, to unload what we have on the truck, we had to unstrap it. As per company policy, I'm not allowed to move the truck with any unsecured load on it. I'm sorry. This sends her into near aneurysm levels of blood pressure. Meanwhile, I can barely contain my laughter. She says, I don't give a damn about your policy. I have somewhere to be. At this point, with impeccably convenient timing, the parking officer shows up and parks behind the truck. She doesn't see the officer arrive, and while the officer's still getting out of her vehicle, I just casually say, Can't you just pull out around it? It's not that hard. With the biggest grin that I've ever had, as I watch, as she realized that I just used her line on her. So she yells at me with a few choice swear words, and storms back to her car and angrily clamors back through her passenger door into the driver's seat. At this point, the officer's walking up to myself and the driver, and before she can even introduce herself, the mom slams it into reverse and stomps on the gas, crashing into our porta potty and knocking it over, and then throws the car into drive and tries to mount the curb and drive on the sidewalk. The officer, the driver, and I are staring in disbelief as she gets halfway over the curb and gets stuck. I can hear her screaming obscenities inside the car. The officer promptly walks up to the door of the car and orders her out. My favorite part of the entire thing is watching her face go to shock as she realized that she just did all of that in front of a police officer. She gets slapped in cuffs as the parking officer calls for a second unit and she's promptly sat on the very curb she tried to drive over. So she sits on the curb yelling to the now two officers about how we told her that she could stay there and that we never asked her to move. The traffic officer responds that she was the one who was originally called when she first refused to move and that she knows what's going on. By the end of the ordeal, she was arrested, charged with child endangerment, reckless driving, destruction of property, the porta potty, and driving with a suspended license. On top of that, she also got her car towed, the kid went home with grandma, and she spent some quality time in jail. I never expected her to actually heed my advice to just pull out around it, but I think next time she'll probably think twice about parking in a towaway zone, if she ever gets a license again. My friends, I am completely shocked, especially at Karen driving with a suspended license. So how dumb do you have to be to 1. Drive with a suspended license because it's illegal, no offense to anybody, and 2. Driving with a suspended license and doing all those illegal things to draw attention to yourself. Wow, Karen. Wow.
When I was preteen, my mom gifted me a diary with a tiny lock and keys. I hid the keys, taped them in special places, and began using it almost immediately. I was a bookworm and loved reading and writing. I was also quite neglected as a child, so my diary was the only place that I could express myself and feel heard. I'd read my last entries, and that allowed me to reflect on my own thoughts and actions and learn from past situations. It was honestly really great for my mental health. So time passed, and I couldn't tell you how long. Probably a few months. So shortly after I wrote an entry, talking about my first wet dream, my mom got furious at me and confronted me, full on screaming. She sat me in the living room as she towered over me, screaming at my face, asking me if I thought this was normal, that I was having depraved thoughts that no child my age should have, and that I promised no sex before marriage when I was five years old. I tried to defend myself at first and protest, not understanding how she even knew about it, and she even took out the unlocked diary as proof, and my attempts at defending myself just fueled her anger more. I sat there silently crying, answering quietly whatever she wanted me to say to whatever she asked me, because nothing else would stop her escalation of screaming. I felt betrayed. My locked diary was my only safe place in that home. I was careful with what I wrote in my diary after that incident, and I even set a few tests to check if I was still having my locked diary read without my knowledge or consent. Every time, it didn't take more than two days for the questions to come out. It turns out that she'd hunt for my diary's keys and read it on a regular basis. So needless to say, I stopped using my diary. My only breathing space had been turned against me. I significantly closed myself off from everyone. It was hard to not write. I no longer had an outlet for emotional or psychological relief, but I really couldn't trust anything anymore. So after a week or two without any new entries, my mom asked me why I stopped using my diary. If I had dared, I'd have rolled my eyes and asked, why do you think? But I knew better than to just attract attention to myself and simply said that I had lost interest in such a thing. Okay, so reading your kid's diary or journal or whatever is one thing, but the audacity that she has to read something that was considered private and then confronting poor OP on the matter is absolutely ridiculous. You can't get upset at someone when you're snooping around and finding out that they're writing something you're not supposed to know about in the first place. I really feel that OP should have gotten petty and started writing things about her mom. Dear diary, I love dad more than I love mom. Dad doesn't snoop through my diary and then get mad at things that he wasn't supposed to read in the first place. Guys, I love this comment right here though. This person says, my mom did something similar, so I started to write in code. I remember her face when I walked in and she couldn't read it. The demands that I decode it were met with a no. My friends, and that brings us to another end of our slash and title people. Guys, if you enjoyed today's episode, do hit that thumbs up. And if you missed the last episode of our slash and title people, a Karen decides to put OP on Facebook Live because OP did not help her. It's ridiculous. Check it out if you haven't, and I'll see you guys in the next one. I love you.